Welcome to Total Reddit with another new story of our slash confessions. I am Chris Everett with you throughout the whole story. My GF said, I am not affectionate enough, so now I treat her like my dog. Before jumping the story, please hit the subscribe button to know when the next video goes live. I rarely show emotion. I'm very reserved and level-headed so my emotions, whether positive or negative, rarely spike too much. But, I love my dog. More than anything or anyone. She gets more life and emotion of of me than anyone. My GF recently sat me down and told me she needs more affection. She knows I don't wear my emotions, and that generally includes her even though she knows I love her. I'm not handsy, I kiss her when appropriate and let her know I love her when appropriate. Since that talk, I've been thinking of my affection for her like I do my dog. I get super excited to see her like my dog does when I get home. My dog constantly wants scratches, so I always rub her shoulders, or play with her hair, or have my hand on her thigh. I love when my dog gets kissy and playful so I get kissy and playful with my GF in the same way. My dog loves when I give her a new toy or treat, so I have little gifts and snacks to give to her when the mood strikes. What a difference. My GF loves it. And it's easy for me because I literally just treat her like my dog, but without the baby voice. It's renewed our passion and she is so, so happy and can't understand how I turned my emotions around so easily. My daughter was granted a make a wish and I'm sad. My daughter has a rare blood disorder called idiopathic thrombocytopedia purpura, immune, which causes her immune system to destroy her platelets, so she just bleeds, randomly. Her eye just hemorrhaged a few weeks ago, and an entire half was filled with blood, today, 5-hour nose bleed. She can feel when they're coming and she sits down with her bloody nose kit, tissues, a trash bag, a puke bucket for when she swallows too much blood and vomits, gauze, cold packs. My daughter is four. I have been able to convince myself for almost three years that yeah, she is sick, but not that sick. Last week we spent four days at the hospital for severe anemia and no detectable platelets. She is that sick. I get it now. She is getting a wish, and she is getting worse because she is that sick. We have tried every medication available for treatment of this disease. Nothing helps. Nothing fixes it. My heart is broken. I fake an accent at my job. My heart is pounding writing this because I literally haven't told anyone this. So I work at this one store, and I work on the sales floor, but before all that, I was just one person interviewing for a position at the store. Before I arrived for my interview, a friend of mine dared me to interview in a British accent. I said I'd do it only if they paid me, and to my surprise, they sent me like $10 through Venmo, which was more than enough for me. I went into the interview with the mindset that I wasn't gonna get hired, and they inevitably hired me on the spot. Accent and all. I was nervous because I had already talked to a whole bunch of higher-ups with the accent and decided to just go through with it thinking it was only going to be a summer job. I was so wrong. It's been like seven months that I've been working there, and I still use the accent to this day. When people ask me where I'm from I just tell them my hometown, because I have several Brits from that town whom I grew up with. The accent hasn't really posed a problem until now cause my BF is friends with one of my co-workers, so I'm gonna have to find the right time to come clean. Thanks for coming to my TED Talk. Why I am Aunt Susan the Karma Farming Facebook Fiend I am not really cool but I commute daily on a train. So it's partially correct. I am an English woman. Living in England. About two years ago the fate that is called life landed an American guy in my local pub. My first impression was that he was different and a little odd. I was drawn to this oddness. It was cool and exciting and it brings out my personality and inner quirks. About a year ago we have become the best of friends. It's platonic and it's amazing. It's a friendship like no other. 
Well, of course being a typically reserved English woman I had never heard of Reddit. The guy, who shall be known as Mr. X obviously is a hardcore Redditor and has an established account. He told me about Reddit suggesting I set up an account and bet that I could never achieve the same amount of karma as him. I think it was more the smug grin on his face as he was looking down at me that had the greatest impact and made me more so determined. What I don't think he realized is that I am incredibly competitive with the determination and heart of a lion. The prize if I did would be a trip to Canada. I have never been west so for me this would be incredible. This was three weeks ago. Over the last three weeks I have frantically posted all sorts of stuff in an eager attempt to work out what works. I have been called every name under the sun karma whore karma farmer and Susan, and to colloquially go back to Facebook. I have even been requested to stay on my side of the pond. This is my confession. This is why I have been behaving like and Susan the karma farming Facebook fiend. I apologize and if you're interested I will of course keep you posted. Confessions of the not-so-cool girl on the train. Today, my next-door pregnant neighbor knocked on my door. Around 7 p.m. today, I heard some knocking on my door. I opened it and it was my next-door pregnant neighbor, she was, I think, in her seventh or eighth month. She was holding a small plate in her hand. In a very shy voice, she asked me if I can give her some of whatever I was cooking because she liked the smell. I think pregnant women sometimes have strong cravings and they cannot resist it. Anyway, she was shy and apologized a lot for her request since we don't know each other. I laughed and told her it is okay. I was cooking a traditional meal from my country and the recipe has olive oil, garlic, jalapenos and some spices. I think the smell was nice. I gave her some of my dinner then she left. I watched her walking home like a cute little penguin who's happy with her successful little hunting. I felt really happy too for some reason. I used to pay my middle school bully not to bully me then I found out he actually needed the money. He made my life a living hell. He would turn all the boys in class against me and bully me about my eyebrows. One time he begged me to buy him pizza and said he promises not to bully me all week if I do. So I bought him a box of pizza and he fulfilled his promise. I loved the idea. I began to do it on a regular basis. I started asking him every Friday what he wants next week so that the bullying doesn't happen again. He asked for two bags of hot fries a potato chip flavor here in the US, and another time he wanted some milk from the cafeteria. And once he asked for colored pencils for art class. My school had a uniform dress code. It was $25 per shirt and the pants were $15, if I remember correctly. He showed up the first day of 8th grade in regular clothes, a tee and jeans. So he got sent to the main office to wait for his parents. My aunt was there because she used to drop off my lunch and hand me money to buy food after school. She saw him upset and asked what's wrong, and he starts crying lightly. His parents wouldn't come because they couldn't afford the uniform and decided it would be best to avoid the situation. After my aunt hands me my lunch, she buys him a uniform hoodie, a couple of tees, and a long sleeve. He said he had pants at home and he was hesitant to accept but eventually took them and thanked her. Now, 13 years later, he runs a non-profit that has something to do with kids receiving books. I think it's sweet and I forgive him for being a bully because he didn't grow up to be an a-hole like most bullies. Thanks for watching this video. If you enjoy this stories, please share this video with your buddies.